Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I hope that you guys are well and doing fine. If you clicking this video for the first time and like true disturbing scary and horror stories on daily basis then, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Well, let's not take much time and start with the stories. I was homeless for a few years after I turned 18. I was kicked out of my home by my mother because I was a fuck-up, and I had to live the hard life of being a bum. Being homeless leaves you with a permanent feeling of anxiousness and a sliver of fear buried within you at all times. You expect anything because you always have to be on edge. The main problem I had with being homeless was sleeping. I was getting enough money from working side jobs to not have to worry about food or clothes, but finding a suitable place to sleep was difficult. You always had to keep in mind being detected. Sleeping in the woods was uncomfortable, but the odds of a cop waking you up and trespassing you are slim. I drifted around sleeping in unconventional and uncomfortable areas for quite some time before I discovered an abandoned church off a side road. The church was in pretty good condition, and it was hidden off a side road so the odds of getting arrested for sleeping there were low. The pews were torn out, and the stained glass windows were murky with dirt and dust, but there was a roof and four walls, and it wasn't infested with animals. So it was heaven. I brought a sleeping bag and some blankets, and I slept there for about a week while I was trying to save up money to get an apartment for once. After a week of sleeping there, I came back to the church after a day of working and settled down in my sleeping bag, ready to go to sleep, when I heard the unmistakable sound of a piano. Two keys being hit repeatedly. My pulse instantly skyrocketed and I grabbed the knife I kept on me at all times. I didn't even know there was a piano in the church, so where the fuck was the sound coming from? I slowly got up with the knife in my hand and started packing my things up. I was getting the hell out of there. As I slung my backpack over my shoulder, the sound of the piano cut off and was replaced by the sound of a door creaking open, slowly. I froze again and stared out towards the altar where the sound was coming from. It was dark, and I didn't want to turn on the flashlight on my phone, so I stood there breathing heavily while I was willing my eyes to adjust to the darkness. The door behind the altar was swinging open by itself. I tried opening it when I first discovered the church, but it was locked and I didn't want to break it down. The door was swinging open, and beyond the door was an even pitcher black than the one I was currently experiencing. I remember I audibly whispered, Fuck and I turned towards the main doors content on getting out before I saw any more. As I turned, I heard the sound of the door swinging open, be replaced by the sound of it slamming open violently and suddenly. A plank of wood fell from the rafters in the ceiling and clattered loudly onto the floor feet away from me, a groan like a mixture of a machine grinding to a halt and a man in pain emitted from the door behind me that slammed open and sent literal chills up my spine. I slammed my way out of the church and started running up the road. I looked behind me to see the front doors slowly shut by themselves behind me. I never returned. My story may not be the most interesting story you've ever heard. It doesn't end in me seeing a ghost or an alien or anything of that nature, but it is real and I think that's scary than anything I could imagine. This started about six months ago. I was getting ready for bed in my room. It was maybe 10.30 p.m. My curtains were closed so I couldn't see out the window, but I heard three hard knocks on the glass of my window. Of course that scared the living shit out of me, so I didn't even look and ran and got my dad, and made him look. Now I live with my parents and two brothers in a fairly busy neighborhood, so noises weren't uncommon to hear. But this knock was directly on my window, so someone wanted me to hear it. 
The thing was, my bedroom isn't facing the front of the house or the road or anything. My room's actually towards the back of the house, so someone would have had to walk to the backyard in order to knock on my window. Which seemed very odd, I had my dad check, but when he opened the curtains, no one was outside the window. He even went in the backyard to check. No one was there. That was the first incident. I closed my curtains and brushed it off as me hearing things, or some sort of animal. The following night, at almost the exact same time, I heard another three knocks on my window. Immediately, I went and got my dad again, for him to just see nothing all over again. But this time, I didn't brush it off and slept in my parents' room on the floor. The next few nights, there was nothing, until about a week later, I was home alone and it was about 8.39 p.m., and I was on FaceTime with my friend. When I heard another three knocks on my window, this time I was home alone so I couldn't go get my dad. But I ran into their room and called them. They told me to call the neighbors to check because they were out of town, so I did. The neighbors saw nothing. The night after that is was about 1 a.m., I think, and I heard the knocking again. It wasn't three times, though. It was more. It woke me up out of a dead sleep. I was tempted to just look out the window to see who, but part of me didn't want to know. I went and got my parents, who didn't bother to check at this point because they didn't see anything the last few times. I kept hearing the knocking for the next few nights after, to the point where I ended up just sleeping on the couch. My parents decided to just let me move bedrooms, and so they moved my bedroom into what was the office and switched everything around, so I hopefully wouldn't hear any more things. After moving bedrooms, I didn't hear anything. It was good for maybe three nights. Then I heard it again. The same knocking. Three hard times. This time I looked out the window. I saw what I assume was a man or a very big built woman crouching down, wearing a gray hoodie and some dark jeans I can't recall the color. It was dark, maybe gray or black. I closed the curtains, went, and got my parents told them all about it. And they informed the police. The police really couldn't do anything because we had no solid proof. Besides my words, they advised we get a camera facing my bedroom and around that area of the house. So that's what we did. This happened about a year ago at the most popular mall in my area. I went there with my husband and decided I wanted to go to the stores, not inside of the actual mall itself, like you have the main area and then buildings on the side that are basically whole stores in the strip. My husband decided to use a massage chair, so I told him I was going to go to another store outside of the building. I honestly didn't see any harm in it because I usually keep knives on me for protection, so they make me feel somewhat safe. As soon as I'm able to walk to the first store in the strip, a white van pulls up slowly in front of me. I was about 15, 20 aft away from the curb. And the first thing I notice is that there are two men wearing black ski masks. One of the guys catcalls me and makes a comment about my butt while I'm standing there. And by this point, I'm paralyzed with fear because I've never experienced this before. After the dude says something to me, they immediately start driving off and disappeared before I could take a picture or anything for evidence. So I'm still in shock because of that. And I ask the nearest couple what they heard. And if that really happened because, again, I was in utter shock and panic at this point. After I ask the couple, I immediately speed walked back into the mall, got my husband, and then spoke to a cop that was inside, as if that actually did anything in that moment. After I spoke to the cop and described the van, he made like an announcement and then my husband and I left the mall. One of the main reasons I was so freaked out is because of the fact the target next door was clapped for child trafficking, and I didn't want to stick around for something else to happen. A Roses on the opposite side of town also had a child-related accident, so this area is sketch when it comes to certain stores. I may not be a child, but it still worries me because, you know, people can be unpredictable.
During our leisurely road trip to Queensland and back, we found ourselves taking a scenic route, occasionally stopping at remote truck stops nestled alongside the forested highways. One particular stop stands out vividly in my memory. As we settled in for a brief respite, a sense of unease washed over us when a pickup truck pulled up behind our vehicle. The driver lingered, casting an unnerving gaze in our direction. Sensing the discomfort, I urged my husband to hasten our departure. But before we could make our escape, the stranger emerged from his vehicle and approached us. With an unsettling grin, he requested a cigarette from my husband, who explained that he only smoked hand-rolled ones, none of which were readily available. Undeterred, the stranger simply replied, I'll wait, maintaining an eerie silence throughout the encounter. His demeanor grew more menacing as he leaned in, his hand concealed behind his back, fixating his predatory gaze on me. Just as tension reached its peak, our two-year-old innocently greeted the stranger. Startled, he recoiled as if jolted by an electric shock, abandoning his pursuit of the cigarette and hastily retreating to his truck. We wasted no time in putting distance between us and the unsettling scene, only realizing later the chilling significance of our location, the infamous Belanglo State Forest, notorious as the burial site of Ivan Milat's victims. Reflecting on the encounter, we couldn't shake the feeling that we had narrowly escaped a potentially perilous situation. The thought lingered that perhaps there was more to the stranger's unsettling demeanor than met the eye, fueling speculation about the shadows lurking within the depths of that forest, where sinister histories intertwined with the present. Thanks for watching the video till the end, guys. If you have any thoughts regarding the stories, please let me know down in the comments below. Have a nice day.